I've come up with my three dream game ideas and whatever you pick, I'm gonna turn into a real professional Steam game. So make sure to watch the end and vote because seriously, whatever you pick, I am gonna make. I see kind of bowling ball shaped raccoon. Okay, that means we're ready to go. Perfect. The first game, I Am Speed, a three platformer, similar to Sonic, but if it was a heist game. Oh. Where the goal of the game is to beat all of the heist levels. Now, our style we're going for is cartoony like Mario or low poly like Donut County. It's a beautiful day for a heist, especially if you're a raccoon. You are going to chase your dreams of becoming the greatest heist duo in history. Oh, a duo. Imagine you're about to perform a heist where you're stealing some coins from a level. Some of these coins you can't reach. So there's actually two phases. Oh, we're building like Fortnite. <laughs> phase one is the engineer phase. There's no time limit. You're constructing items in the world to prepare for the heist and you are playing as the engineer. So imagine you drop in. Mm -hmm. So you go around and you start building. And when you're ready, you enter phase two. Phase two <laughs> is the heist. There is a time limit. As soon as you gather the first coin and you have to use your platforming skills. Mm -hmm. So you jump in and maybe you roll up this ramp. Very Sonic-like style. Maybe you hit to the top of the building, boom, come down, hit this ramp, hit this jump pad, a second jump pad. Over here, you roll across, maybe you do a wall run to the next wall run, to the next wall run, up here to the springboard, through a portal, across the way, down and through to the exit. Kind of a mix between Sonic where you're riding through rails and grinding, but also the tight platform platforming mechanics of Mario. And there's always gotta be a world map with these games. Mm -hmm. So as you move further into the game, you get new tools. For example, new bumpers, new types of ramps, grind rails, booster tracks, portals, loop-de-loops. And of course, on the other side, you get skills like double jumps, air dashes, and wall bounces. And that mm. is I Am Speed. I loved it. I love the raccoon one. I think because I miss Sly Cooper. I was a big fan of Sly Cooper. I love raccoons and I, I like the idea of controlling two different types of raccoons. In my head, I'm thinking like, okay, this is like Poly Bridge, but I, instead of the car going automatically, I then get to run on it. You can literally imagine one guy like pushing it and his friend saying like, no, a little bit over to the left, but it's cute raccoons. One is fat and can't move the items. The other one's skinny and can, <laughs> can use the walkie talkie or whatever. And the more I think about I Am Speed as a puzzle game, I'm like, damn, I'd love to play that. We are Mario gamers here. So everyone saw yeah, yeah, platforming yeah. and thought like, oh, Mario. Ah! <laughs> I do want the raccoon game. Here we go. Second game is called Mine the Mountain. Automation game mm -hmm. where the goal is to reach the top of the mountain. Our style we're going for is either low poly or something a little bit more realistic. As legend has it, an undiscovered ore lies at the top of the mountain. But no dwarf has ever reached the top until now. The world is set in the mountains. It's not a giant cube, it's probably something a little bit more epic. So you drop in, and the mountain is so big, this is what makes it so interesting, is there's multiple biomes. The biomes have different types of ores, and they get more rare as you scale up. As you move up the mountain, it gets colder, it gets harder to survive. There may also be lightning strikes, so you have to build lightning rods to stop the lightning from zapping you. Now I'm switching to a grid just so you can kind of get an idea of the game loop. But once you get your building set up, you build an ore harvester that moves into the factory, you convert them into ingots and those ingots earn you money. And you can take that to buy new stuff. Classic automation progression where you get wood platforms, conveyor belts, pulley systems. You may also get player upgrades. So you can move faster, hold more stuff. Maybe you can get a cool grappling hook. A big thing that we really wanna do with this is increase your ability to, to traverse through the mountain. So you start by building better platforms. So you're gonna be building massive platforming networks along the mountain. Now the cool thing about building up and down with verticality, you can drop items down and add these splitters that will grab them midair. If you drop them too far, they'll break. Because we're going Dwarven, I kinda want it to feel like Lord of the Rings where you get wooden buckets and pulley systems and carts and tracks. Mm -hmm. Another crazy idea we had was, what if we had like a cannon? That's so fill sick. the cannon with items. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you right now, I'm drooling. <laughs> <laughs> now the cannon, looks at these different factories, and if one of them has empty slots or needs more resources, it'll automatically shoot them up. Now again, the goal is to climb up, and when you create factories, they stop working because it's too cold. So eventually you have to get more mechanics, like these heaters that will eventually uh, get things warm and up and running again. Just to give you an idea of like the scale and the visuals of what it would look like to build something on like a vertical cliff. And you're also gonna discover letters from other attempts all the way to the top of the mountain. And that is Mind the Mountain.
<laughs> my mom voted for Mind the Mountain. I'll say it that I like the most because I just like automation and like dumb brain is Mind the Mountain. So the vertical is going to be different. Um, yeah, Lord of the Rings canon. I'm going to put on a dwarf hat. I'm going to do a stupid accent and I'm going to like grind out automation. From the turbo nerds, there's just a hearty appetite. <laughs> I've never seen this before in my life. <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, is To Kill the Devil, a survival roguelike, kind of like Risk of Rain, but with survival. Or if you've heard of Muck, it's basically like Muck, but with persistence. The goal of the game is to beat the five shrines and kill the devil, no matter how many deaths it takes. Using its low poly, but slightly spooky, imagine a map similar to Risk of Rain, but not quite, mm -hmm. that has shrines on it. So you drop into the surface, you gather resources, very survival-like. You build a base and a workbench, and you try to prepare for night, because at night, stuff's gonna attack you. Killing enemies earns you souls, and if you survive, you can use that money to open chests. Now, what makes it different is there's always a choice. We wanna have builds in this. Different types of characters, different runs are gonna create different types of play styles. And the more rare chests will have permanent gems you can use to spend for the next run. Assuming you survive, you continue to build out your base and progress. You can get new items, new uh, walls and vests and smelters, and as you progress, you're gonna get stronger and stronger on that run. If you make it far enough, you can start to tackle the shrines. Once you activate them, you get a boss battle. And when you kill this particular boss, you get a gem and maybe some really cool permanent upgrades for that run. There's a lot of dying involved. And when you die, you get the permanent upgrade stuff, very similar to Hades, but what makes it interesting is the deployable base. Now, if you played Muck, you find that building the base in the very beginning is pretty monotonous. So my thought was, what if you can build a deployable base and you get to choose what items you get to start with and you can actually buy more space so your deployable base gets bigger. You deploy to the surface, you get to pick where your base goes, and boom, you start with an advantage. And that is to kill the devil. That's a great idea. It's giving me like kind of Returnal vibes, giving me a little okay. bit of Valheim vibes. A roguelite where not only you come back stronger, but like your base is just a great idea. So you don't feel like disheartened and lose your progress. I like the idea that the base starts from scratch with you. I really like that. That really tickles me. To Kill the Devil has my vote. Oh man, three good ideas. I wish one of them was like <laughs> a shitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Those are the pitches. Please, please go vote because our future is in your hands. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next project.